you know what? Maybe love is actually real. Hey guys, what's up? It's Emergency and welcome, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are talking about the final season, season three of Young Royals. And this show, if y'all have been following this channel for a while, you'd know that Young Royals has been a series that we've been covering on this channel for actual years. Like we've been in this for the long haul. And just as a fan, it's really sad to see this series come to an end because it's just too good. Like this is a really feel good queer show. And I feel like it's another example of just feel good queer representation in TV and media. And I feel like we need more of that. So I'm just really sad to see this show go. I do feel like it was its time to go. And I applaud it for not overstaying its welcome because it really could have taken a different route where it just had season after season after season. Three is a little short for a show that's based on a high school show because usually they do like four seasons but i'm not going to complain because i feel like they really fleshed out the story with this final season we're going to talk about that we're going to get into that because a lot happened this season if you have not already caught up with young royals or have not seen the series at all then definitely be sure to watch it watch the reviews which i will link somewhere around here and then come back for this because we're getting the spoilers there's just no way around it. I know the sixth episode, as of filming this, the sixth episode, the final episode just came out today. So if you have not seen it by the time this video comes out, what are you doing? There are going to be spoilers. So just to preface that ahead, we're gonna be talking about some themes for this season, how the characters have developed over the course of the series, getting into that final episode because a lot happened in that last episode, as well as getting into some fan speculation slash predictions as to where I think this story could go if it were continued slash where I think the characters are going to go post this story. So if any of that is of interest to you and you are new to the channel, then be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any content that I have coming out on this channel every single week. Also, while you're at it, leave a like on this video because it helps out a ton with the YouTube algorithm and you can follow me on my socials at emergency on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter where I post TV and music reactions and just general lifestyle content. And if you want to go a step beyond to support the channel, you can become a channel member today to get exclusive access to two additional show review videos a month as well as early access to every one of these videos. So if that's of any interest to you, then be sure to click the join button to check that out. But other than that, let's talk about Young Royals because, oh my god. So can we address the elephant in the room? Like Young Royals was just a hit through and through. I honestly am so thankful of y'all because y'all put me onto the show. I would have never started Young Royals if y'all weren't in the comments being like, you need to watch the show. This show is so good. And I would have been so sick. I would have been so beside myself if I would have missed out on this experience as it was coming out. Because not only is this show so feel good and so amazing, but the fan base, the Young Royals fan base is one of the nicest fan bases I have ever been blessed to be a part of. So shout out to us. I'm really Really sad that the show is over but yeah the show was a hit also can we get into how like i kind of dressed for the occasion i kind of wanted to throw on something a little formal to give like the swedish royal family energy me just like on a white colored shirt but yeah i have like sparkles here and it's like kind of cropped you see I, I tried that's the moral of that story anyways let's talk about the plot of season three which y'all actually came here for so season three takes place after the tumultuous ending of season two where we they officially claim simon officially in front of this giant televised event at their school we essentially get the fallout of that and we really get to see how having a relationship in the public eye specifically in the royal public eye can really affect a relationship especially a relationship between high schoolers like i feel like no teenagers should have to go through that and the fact that the two of them are is just really sad especially for simon like he's going through it this season i feel like he's been going through it this entire show like he has his moments where he can be a little bit of the bad guy but by and large life is just happening to him like he is getting knocked down season after season like i am so sorry for this man like specifically in the scope of their relationship like simon is dealing with a bunch of hate that he really doesn't feel like he has the opportunity or space to express with Wille because for the majority of the season, he's trying desperately to make this relationship work. But as the hate comments get worse, as the threats get worse, it only gets harder for Simon to actually keep it together. And I just felt so bad for him this season for consistently muting himself from the relationship, lowering himself in his needs so that he can make the relationship work because that is just not healthy in any form of relationship, whether that be platonic or romantic. Like you should be able to show up fully and have your full range of emotions around the person you care about. But because of the scope and context of this relationship, he just wasn't able to do that. And where I fear I have to not support Simon 100% is the way that he took all of that pent up aggression, frustration, and anger out on his sister Sara because 
Well, yes, she did really stir some stuff up last season. I feel like she was really trying hard to figure her own stuff out and was trying to have her own redemption arc. And Simon wasn't making it any easier, like, truly. And we'll clock more of Sadasi later. But yeah, I was just sad to see how he was treating his sister, especially knowing how close they were in previous seasons. Also, while we're talking about his character, could we give Simon's actor, Omar, a big shout out? Because I don't know, whatever he was doing, whatever his hair and makeup team was doing, but he was eating every single scene. Skin was flawed. Flawless. hair was perfectly curled like you ate that you truly ate that but now let's pivot into talking about willy willy <laughs> I'm sorry, I will not say that. I will not refer to him like that again. But moral of the story for most of the season, this man does not know how to communicate. And that's not entirely his fault because of his situation. He was never brought up in a family or an environment where he could communicate because he's very duty bound. Like his needs, wants, and desires in life come second to his duty. Like his duty comes first. So of course he doesn't really know how to communicate how he feels because no one really gave a shit about how he felt before. But it's really showing in this season, even more so than in past seasons. Because I feel like honestly a lot of the conflicts that Simone and Wille went through could have been resolved if they actually had an honest conversation about what was going on in their lives and what they were actually dealing with. Like they shouldn't have had to actually open up being like, oh my god, I'm Simone, like I'm getting so much hate right now online and people, th and someone threw a rock through my window, no Bridget Mendler. And Wille being like, oh my god, my family literally doesn't like me. My mom is having a mental breakdown because I don't want to be crowned prince and my brother is no longer alive. Like, y'all could have conversed about that a little sooner so it didn't have to blow up and become what it was. But honestly, honestly, that's accurate human portrayal because I feel like most people don't know how to communicate. But yeah, as a viewer, it's just like, dang miscommunication trope is going very strong right now. And when I feel like it comes to their relationship specifically, I feel like both of them are just serial people pleasers. And just having two people with really bad people pleasing tendencies try and work things out can be a little difficult. Like, Wille's whole job is to be a people pleaser, being a man of the people, being the crown prince. And Simon just wants to make this work. He wants to make things easier for Wille. Like, not posting on social media, deleting his social media, muting his personality publicly and muting his beliefs publicly. So it really just shows like how when two people with bad people pleasing tendencies outside of their relationship bring that inside of their relationship it can cause things to be a little messy and cause a bit of friction where neither party is truly satisfied or happy now this is a quick segment where we talk about august we're gonna talk more about august when we talk about the last episode but in this quick 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 character breakdown august he still gets no sympathy for me i'm sorry i know the august hive runs strong i know that some of y'all really want August have his redemption arc. I know a lot of you are just rooting for August. I am not one of them. Truly, I am not one of those people because August, in my opinion, and with all due respect, can choke, okay? Because I feel like this whole season, they wanted me to feel bad for him so bad, like so bad. But it just really wasn't working for me because he will always just be scummy to me. And specifically when he was trying to be in his lover boy era with Sada, like it was just really giving force. Like you were trying to bring back yearning and pining in 2024 so bad where it just isn't really translating for me like I, after all the stuff that you did you want to be all certified lover boy like no mm -mm. Mm -mm. i am glad sada put you in your place not once not twice but maybe three times like oh my god and yeah i'll give him the benefit of the doubt they did do a really good job of explaining like why he is the way he is and giving him some form of remorse and redemption in the end but still i'm still looking at him sideways i don't care i don't and you can fight me for it actually don't fight me for it because it's not that serious but just know i said what i said okay one of my favorite characters this season felice i feel like she went through it this season she got so much amazing character development she's been an unsung hero in this series for so long. They really took a lot of the season to delve into her identity as being like the only black girl in the show and at the school. Talking about the different microaggressions that she goes through from the staff of the school to just feeling othered at the school, specifically having to do with her hair. They mentioned a couple of times in the season how her hair has been a point of contention in the school, how like she's constantly being called out for having messy hair, but none of the other girls who happen to be white get any flack for it. And she has a really amazing scene with her dad during the school evaluation episode where her dad talks about how much he loves the school and how much he's down for the school and wants her to speak positively on the school. Yet when she pries a little bit further further into his actual experience at the school, it showed that he was actually very much othered. And he really lived up to those like respectability politics where he felt like he had to be 10 times better than everyone else just to be seen in a positive light and was constantly bullied and like made fun of because of his race. So I'm glad that they pointed that out and they talked about that simply because when it comes to topics of race, oftentimes those conversations are really relegated or are more so popularly talked about 
openly in American media. So seeing a show that's based in Sweden tackle these topics as well is just so amazing because I'm sure that representation is so worthwhile for any black people or any non-white people that are living in Sweden and have gone through that. So shout out to them for adding that storyline in there. I just feel like Felice is such an amazing character. She honestly needed to forgive Sada a little bit sooner. Like that was her only real friend if we're being honest. Like of course Sada did her big one last season, let's not forget. But still, she was well-intentioned through it all. And finally, Sada. I honestly felt for her this season. If you all see my previous reviews, you know that I have been very critical of Homegirl, specifically last season because of the stuff that she was doing was pissing me off. Like, girl, make some better life decisions. Like, sleeping with the enemy? Really? Blowing everything up in an attempt to help? Really? But this season, she really had a redemption arc. And honestly, it was kind of relatable. Like, running from your problems is how it be sometimes. No shade. Like, sometimes the task is too vast for who you are at the time. So sometimes you just need to run. <laughs> you need to run and wait till you can approach that task again. And one thing about Sara, she gonna run. She ran for most of this season from her issues. She said, go back to school and face the consequences of my actions. No. I'm gonna hang out with my deadbeat dad. And really that sounds really messed up because it is. But at the same time, I'm glad we got those scenes because we got to see more of a characterization of her father and how complex of a character her father is. Showing that oftentimes no one is 100% bad or 100% good, like it's a mix of both. Like yeah, his father deals with alcoholism and addiction, but he still deep down wants to be a good father. He just actually can't be that consistently for her, which is really sad, but also very relatable and true for many people. But I'm so happy that she finally stopped running from her issues and addressed them head on and was able to confront and talk to the people that she had wronged, apologize to the people that she had wronged, and moved on from it. Like, I, I love to see it. But that's enough about characters for now. It's time to talk about the meat and potatoes, what we've all been waiting for, and that is the finale, episode six of season three. Because I was very scared for this episode. Because episode five left off with such a big cliffhanger with Wille and Simon essentially breaking up, like being like, I can't do this anymore, and breaking up because that is huge. They've been on and off together, but really together for almost the entirety of the series. And for them to break that off in the second to last episode, I was concerned that not everything would be addressed in the final episode because they had a lot of loose ends to tie up. They had the stuff with Wille and Simon's relationship. They had the stuff with August to tie up. They had the stuff with the school to tie up. They had Felice and Sato's relationship to tie up. Like they had a lot of things to get done, but I feel like they did each of those pretty well. I'm not going to lie to ya. And it honestly ended up being what I feel like is the most emotional episode of this series. Like I, when I tell you, when the credits started to roll, so were the tears down my face. Like I, <sighs> This last episode got me. It got me real bad because not only was it really sweet, really wholesome, really emotional, but it also reminded me like this is the last episode we're getting of them ever. And that really just drove it home to me like this is the last time I'm seeing this cast in this way. And that's very, very sad. And one thing I feel like this finale did very, very well was leaving the surprise of how things would end up till the very end. Like I truly didn't know which way it was going to go. Maybe call me naive if you called it, if you clocked it from the beginning, shout out to you. But I honestly thought they could have went either way with Wille and Simon's relationship. Like I could have seen them being like, you know what? We can't be together. Even if Wille does leave the monarchy, Simone still just can't do it and needs that space. So they would have went their own separate ways. And then I also could have seen it go, how it ended up going, spoiler alert, but you already knew that, that they would end up together. And they did a really good job of balancing that line up until the very end because I was gagged. I was positively gagged, but gagged nonetheless. And you can really tell from like a production and storytelling standpoint that the team behind Young Royals was being so intentional with the way that they did this episode from all of the callbacks to the previous seasons to just the way that this episode was shot beautifully, might I add. Like that scene with Wille and Simon in the forest as they're having their conversation and going through the memories of their relationship, like that was beautiful. To the inclusion of Simon's song to Wille for his birthday, gorgeous. To some of the callbacks between the whole like goodbye scene, which they had in season one, I believe. I think also in season two, where either Wille or Simon says goodbye to the other as they break up or say goodbye to each other. It's just really nice to see that come full circle because it really does show like the writers and the people behind the show really cared for this series. And it just makes it even more sad that it's ending because it's not very common that you see such intentional story writing anymore. We've talked about this a lot on this channel, like I feel like it's very well appreciated. And one thing I really love about this episode, that some people may find cheesy, some people may find blah, 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 but 99% of the characters in this show end up having a happy ending, which may seem cheesy, but I'm really happy about it. The only one that didn't get a happy ending was August, and I feel like he deserved that, okay? Like, even from like the side characters, like from Neil's coming out to his friends saying that he's into guys and being resoundingly accepted for that, which I found shocking at first because I forgot the name of the guy, but the guy with the buzz cut 
that that was being an asshole the whole series and being like, I don't care, like, that's cool. Like, let's find you a guy, you're so handsome, blah, blah, blah. Like, that was really sweet. To the side characters, like the friends of Felice, having their sapphic awakening. Like, it was so nice to see the attention to detail where everyone gets their plot lines addressed. We see August finally apologize to Wille for everything that he's done to him. And we get to see Wille apologize to August for the things that his brother did to August, because we didn't talk about that actually, I forgot. The one redeeming thing, the one thing that I do feel sorry for August for was the stuff that he had to endure during his initiation because that sounds very traumatizing. So I'm sorry that that happened to him and I'm glad that he got that closure in that way. But for all the rest of his actions, I'm glad that he finally saw the repercussions of them. Like the way that Sada left him and was making him think that they'd get back together and she kissed him. And instead of being like, you know, I'll take you back, she goes, it's okay, those feelings will pass. Like, sorry, how could you not say it's and she ate that down. I am sorry she cleared. I'm glad that Sada and Felice finally made up. We're able to become friends again. And I really miss their friendship this season because I feel like they were some of the best friends on this show. And we're such a wholesome aspect of this show. And the fact that they weren't friends for like the majority of this season was just so irking to me. So I'm glad that they finally got together in that way. And for the entirety of this episode, Wille and Simon, like their push and pull for this entire episode gave me so much anxiety. Like I was anxious from them breaking up to them having to see each other in school, to them not knowing what to say to each other in school, to them having to counsel their friends, being like, should I talk to him? Should I get closure? Blah, 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 blah. Their relationship at the beginning of this episode was giving me stress. And one of the more impactful parts of this episode was Wille's relationship with the royal family and how that transformed over the course of this episode. Because they shut down the school, the school is closing. It's their last day at the school, they're having their hip hip hurrahs. But I feel like the way that Wille developed in this episode was so amazing to see, just from a character development standpoint, because I feel like we're finally seeing him come to terms with what he wants. And I feel like that's the overlying theme of this series. Like Wille has progressively gotten his own autonomy of his own life throughout the different seasons of this series and the different experiences that he's been put through. So it's just really nice to finally see him be able to make his own decisions and stand by them to choose his own destiny of how he's going to progress forward. Because if we remember back to season one, most, if not all aspects of his life were controlled by his family. Whereas now at the end of the series, he is in control of his own life. He is choosing what he is going to do, what he is not going to do because he has the agency, the confidence and the experience to actually do so. Like by the end of this series, I feel like he knows how to maneuver his way through the monarchy how he sees fit. And they show that through subtle ways, like from the way that he was talking to his guards about how he was going to the party. Like season one, Wille probably would have snuck out, probably would have tried to make a fuss or something. But instead, he is honest and upfront to the guards being like, I know my brother was getting into stuff, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be going to this party. You guys can follow me and keep make sure everything is safe and make sure that I'm not going to get into any trouble. I'm going to do my best to not get in any trouble, but this is what's going to happen. And having him have that confidence, have that assertiveness and that maturity is just so nice as a longtime viewer to see because he's come so far as a person and I'm happy to see that for him. Also with the last conversation with him and his parents, him being like, I don't want to be the next king. I don't want to be the crown prince anymore. And him actually saying that in an articulate, calm demeanor because I feel like he's been saying that throughout the entire series but it's been via screaming match but for him to actually have the confidence and the backbone of it all to actually say that mean that and to be heard by his parents hats off hats off honestly but one thing that scene did make me question is because they were alluding that like since Wille didn't want it August was going to take it through like the way that they were showing like the different camera things when he was saying I don't want it and it showed like August being like woo graduating it makes me wonder like does august actually want to be in the monarchy anymore because up until the last episode i thought the answer would be a surefire yes but the way that the last conversation between august and his friends went made me question it and wonder if he's actually questioning it as well because he reveals to his friends that he's the next in line and he seems really excited about it but his friends are kind of like "Ooh, why would you want that you were kind of living your best life being tangential to the royal family and getting all the perks from it without having to do any of the work and i feel like that's one of the first like aha moments that august has being like huh maybe you're right maybe it was a little bit easier before but now like he's this is responsibility now so it's kind of like my question slash prediction for like moving forward past the scope of the series like will august actually want to take this role or will he be forced into it similar to how wille was because i feel like that's like an aspect that he didn't think about before and, and i'd like to see that thought process and that conversation expounded upon if it were to go further i know that it's not but you know headcanon but the last thing i want to talk about recap wise the part that actually broke me was the final scene with wille and simon like wille getting out of the car and sprinting at simon's car being like Simon, Simon, 
<laughs> I honestly thought they were gonna drive off and leave him in the dust. I was so happy that they stopped though because my boy was running. Shout out to his actor because I know that scene was hard to do, but oh my God, the emotions in that scene. Like they were both acting their asses off. Like shout out to both of them for such an amazing performance. The emotions and the gravity of the situation was just so palpable. Like you, it was too good. Like we were saying like, I left the royal family. Like I don't want to be a part of the royal family anymore. I'm choosing you. I want to be with you. My little gay heart shattered. And him asking Simon if he still wants to be with him, if he still loves him. And Simon being like, well, what do you think? I did not need to see that. Well, I did. I did need to see it. I really enjoyed seeing it. But for my own mental health, I did not need to see it. That was really sweet and such an amazing ending. Such a wholesome ending. Like to see Wille and Simon go off into the sunset and to have Sada and Felice in the front seat driving, like them literally just driving off happy into the sunset was beautiful. And the way that they ended the series, the way that they ended every single season with Wille looking into the camera, but this time he looks happy, like, Come on, this was a series. This was a solid series and I am so glad that I've gotten the opportunity to watch it. I hope that they come off. Actually, part of me wants them to have like a spinoff or for them to have a continuation, but I, I honestly feel like it needs to end where it, it where it's at because I feel like it ended in such an amazing place. My headcanon is that they go off and have an amazing summer vacation. Maybe that's the extra content that we get, like a little summer vacation spinoff. Showing them all doing their big one on summer vacation together. I actually would really like to see that. I feel like that'd be a really cute, like maybe a one or two special episode just to give us a another goodbye before ending the series forever. I've had such an amazing time covering and talking about the show over the past couple of years. In terms of feel-good queer representation, like, it's really there. Again, I say this and every time I talk about queer rep, I love to see some storylines in the future revolving around two characters of color, just because I feel like that is such an underrepresented group of stories to tell. But for the queer representation that we got, I feel like it was really good. I really, I, I can't stop talking about how much I like this show. Like, I'm just gonna give you my rating. I, I would give this show a solid 9.5 out of 10. I'd give this series a solid 9.5 out of 10. It is very well done. From start to finish, it is a hit. I feel like the se this season overall would probably give me maybe like an 8.5 just because I feel like the beginning was a little slow and not much was necessarily happening outside of the push and pull of Wille and Simon's relationship. But that last episode really carried and the series overall I feel like was really great and is a must watch for people that just want a feel good coming of age queer romance storyline like that. Y'all could take it, this is a hit show. It's a hit, but what can I say? But now I wanna hear from you. What did you all think about Young Royals? Are you excited, sad, emotional that the series is over? If you haven't seen it yet, are you going to watch it? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you've been here since the first Young Royals review, thank you so much for sticking around. I really do appreciate you. I hope that we get another similar show to fill this void moving forward. But other than that, y'all, thank you so, so much for watching. If you're new, subscribe, leave a like, follow me on my socials and consider becoming a channel member today. But other than that, I have an emergency and I will see you in the next video. Peace.